Well, hello. It is um, episode 50 of Frame by Frame. The clock is running, but it seems as though I've lost Andy and I'm lost in this in this jungle. And it's weird, um, but I'm in this forest and it's, it's creepy and I, and I keep on hearing noises. There we go again. I heard the noise. What What is that? What is that? Oh. Andy, is that you? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You 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 nearly killed me with your automatic weapon. I didn't know it was you. I'm sorry. I'm I, I don't even know how I got in this jungle, Come and I don't know why I'm holding this this submachine gun. It's it's a Soviet main cube in AK-47. Is that what it is? Yeah. I didn't even know I knew how to fire it. <laughs> You didn't. You didn't really hit me at all. Oh, I missed. Yeah, you oh. missed the well, intervention, good. man. <laughs> I just thought I saw something move in the in in the forest, and yeah. Actually, look at this leaf. Uh huh. It's like a, an illuminescent sort of liquid. Could this be its blood? What? You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Anyway, huh, Andy? So, Spice World movie. Episode 50 has come on to a bit of a fiery start. So, we're lost in this jungle, right, Andy? Yeah, we yes we are. So are I'm and scared of snakes, so I'm a little bit on on yeah, edge here. I'll be yeah. honest with you. Oh holy cow! I mean, it's 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 strange, and I don't know why we're here or how we got here. I I'm thinking I'm not even going to think that Spice Girls have anything to do with this. No, I'm we pretty did, sure we did the X Files last week. We did, and um, well, well, well remembered. <laughs> And this week, I have no idea what to talk about. We're in the middle of the jungle. We've got this glowing leaf, and uh, you've got machine gun. Yeah. Uh, um, is there anything that comes to mind? What was that film with um, the the ever-famous Carl Weathers <laughs> and Jesse Ventura? Oh, Carl Weathers. He was good. Yeah, he was good. Uh, oh, you mean the one that was directed by John Tierman, who uh, did the Die Hard film? Yeah, that. Yeah. The, what's the other guy in it? Yeah. I think this was one of those films that we promised to review by episode uh, on episode three when we did Aliens. Isn't it the other thing that was similar to Aliens? It has an alien in it. it has an a that's what it is. Sport alien. Predator. Oh, right, okay. That was one of those competitions, is who's going to say Predator first? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it? It was the secret, like, masculine, I'm not going to say it first, he's going to say it first. He's not going to say it. Yeah. Well, thought, you said it first, so huh? Yeah, I, won. I said it. You win. I won, I won that <laughs> one. Do you know what you win? What? You win the, the DVD of Predators, by which is uh, produced oh. <laughs> produced by Robert Rodriguez. You can take that away and you can uh, look at Adrian Brody pretending to be Butch. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, <laughs> um, so we're gonna. I think we can talk about Predator. I mean, it's a, it's a night. I think we'll just camp here for the night. Okay. And, um, yeah, we'll go. We'll, I've got one, one, one second. Right there, we go. I've got fire going there. Brilliant. That's good. And why is CBB's plague in the background? Don't worry about it. Okay. Is it is it appropriate for us to bring a baby into this situation? It's fine. Hey, if um, CBB's is on in the forest, does it still make a sound? <laughs> Does it still brainwash your children? Yeah. yeah. 
Obviously not, because... No, he's uh, paying no attention to it. Yeah. yeah. Good, good Wi-Fi in this jungle. Good Wi-Fi, he's playing with his iPad. We've been promising to do, like I say, we've been promising to do the Predator movies ever since we talked about Aliens, episode two and three. Yeah. Uh, I think we can actually talk about this one in one episode, not do a two-parter, because... I think we can yeah. do that. Yeah, because uh, 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 different to Alien, uh, Predators kind of haven't made that many movies if you discount the Alien vs. Predator series. Mm. So I will go out on a limb here. Okay, you're going to go out on a limb. And I would say that Predator is on his best film. <laughs> okay, so that's, a, that's a, so his best film. I think so. I prefer it to the Terminator film. We are a rescue team, not assassins. Now, what do we got to do? In a part of the world where there are no rules. We pick up their trail at the chopper, run them down, grab those hostages before anybody knows we were there. What do you mean we? Deep in the jungle, where nothing that lives is safe. We lose it here. You're in a world of hurt. Showtime, Jen. Knock, knock. An elite rescue squad. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> is being led by the ultimate warrior. We need the best. That's why you're here. But now... What's got Billy so spooked? There's something out there waiting for us. And it ain't no man. They're up against the ultimate enemy. Holy mother of God. Nothing like it has ever been on Earth before. She says the jungle just came alive and took him. We cannot see it. No blood, no bodies. We hit nothing. But it sees the heat of our bodies and the heat of our fear. Whatever it is out there, it killed Hapa. And now it wants us. It kills for pleasure. He will skin the lion! It hunts for sport. He's killing us one at a time. We're all gonna die. But this time, it's picked the wrong man to hunt. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Century Fox presents Arnold Schwarzenegger. Predator. The hunt begins Friday, June 12th at theaters everywhere. It's definitely a strong candidate for one. Of, yeah. Is it? It's probably maybe not as good. The film's probably not quite as good as the first Terminator, but I think he's best in this film. It, it, yeah. This is his best performance. I think he is so. Best in this film, it's, it's, good it's the grammar, sm- it? smoking cigar moments. I think he. It was because he was able to be um, the Arnold Schwarzenegger that we want to see. We oh, just won. It was a very, very macho film. <laughs> yeah, unlike the recent films that he's been doing, where he's been getting emotional about. Films. Yeah, like magging and whatnot. Yeah, which it, which is kind of. It doesn't fit. It's like uh, Sylvester Stallone being the president. You know, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> um, still, they still haven't done that. No, they've had, they've had Kevin. Imagine giving his presidential speech. Why? <laughs> they've given the role to Kevin I prefer, James. I prefer him to Trump. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But anyway, what about Kevin James? Do you prefer Kevin James because in Pixels they made him president? I prefer him to Trump. Yeah, prefer. Well, let's prefer everything to Trump. Yeah. Uh, so Predator was. Um, it was one of those wild movies that came out of nowhere I think back in the 80s they weren't really making these kind of movies well like, trying to um, yeah, but nothing like this was out there no, I mean, Ra- and Rambo and Aliens was kind of the only two comparisons I suppose this is one of those films like from Dust of Dawn it does the, the old switcheroo yes where if you didn't know anything about Predator yeah. you'd think they, the, the, the team were the Predators that are going to um, save this. The what they're going in for? It was like a drug bust, wasn't it? Yeah. It yeah, but a, they were li- essentially they lied to. They go for a fake thing, don't they? That's it. That's and, it. And, yeah. and, and um, but while they're there, it yeah. turns out there's an alien in the jungle that's for sport killing humans, which I think is a, a glorious idea. I yeah, think it, absolutely. It's one of those simple ideas that you, we've seen several times now. I think um, it's. Very much a repeated motif, 
Um, but this this was kind of like the first time it, it really happened. I mean, if you think about Punishment Park, that was kind of a similar thing where people were chased by cops and, and killed out in the in the uh, the deserts of Arizona and yeah. uh, as a as a mean of punishment um, and sentencing and fun. And this one actually does does just combines the uh, sci-fi element with Rambo. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Or, or a Vietnam War film. I mean, this is kind of like Apocalypse Now, uh, Casualties of War, uh, which were very strong. I think back in the 80s, uh, Vietnam War films were were pretty much one of the biggest things that was yeah, coming like out of Yeah, Platoon um, and yeah, Full yeah. Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full Metal, <laughs> Hamburger Hill and all those. So they wanted to just do that, but just take away the, uh, you know, the, the human aspect of it. Yeah. So you, the setup is... Uh, Carl Weathers and um, the um, other army chief, whoever it is, they're just sorry. This, the helicopter lands, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Everyone gets out the helicopter, and then a huge beast of a man called Arnold Schwarzenegger gets out the helicopter, chomping a cigar at the time. Yeah, he got a cigar in his mouth. Looks, he really owns that yeah, character. That's it. Yeah. And then he's like, he sees Carl Weathers like Dylan, son of a bitch, and then they do that hand fight. And yeah. then, like, Arnie's arms about ten times the size of Carl Weathers. It's incredible, because you remember that, that uh, it's like an arm wrestle, it's like a, it was a greeting in mm. the form of an arm wrestle. Yeah. Of, of, you know, who's, who's going to be the strongest, who's going to, ex- whose muscle is going to explode first, it was basically. Yeah. And, um, amazing. Obviously, Arnie was stronger. <laughs> yeah. his arm was huge. But there's there's no uh, there's no cheapness to this though. I mean, the, the characters are just pure macho. There's yeah, no, yeah, there's, yeah. There's pure testosterone, but there's no cheesiness. There's no there's no tackiness to their characters. I no, don't think. No, no, Even no. Jesse Ventura comes in full force with meaty chops. He doesn't, you know. Uh, I, I think they all do. It. I mean, yeah. um, Arnie, obviously the chief. Yes. And then you've got. Uh, Jesse Ventura is the guy who has the what's it called midi gun is it that one that uh, crazy machine gun yeah the, I Mid- think, is it is called it, a midi gun is it, I think there's a midi See, gun the, the word midi doesn't sound <sighs> big enough to me it yeah. sounds it should be should be called uh, overkill maximo yeah. maximo <laughs> maximo gun <laughs> mini gun Midi gun, midi, midi, yeah, midi sounds small. Midi, yeah, but that's that a sounds huge... like an interface as well, doesn't it? But then, uh, I think it became a competition from from this moment on, when Arnold Schwarzenegger says, "Hey, Jesse Ventura got to wield the biggest gun in this movie." Yeah. Um, so it, then he made all these other films where he had a huge machine gun, uh, you know, like um, a razor. I think was his uh, pièce de résistance. Yeah, he had this pretty much the same gun, didn't he? Yeah, I think he was going yeah. for it. Yeah, it's like a, if Jesse Ventura can do it, so can I. Yeah. But um, I got bigger arms than Jesse. Yes, I, I am. I am stronger in every way. They are my sisters. <laughs> but apparently, on the um, the set of this, I only had them all working out. To, yeah. to look the part. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he, I know Carl Weathers was already quite obviously with the Rocky films and yeah. stuff. You know, he was already well built. But I know he had them all. Yeah, and I can I can imagine that really working yeah. to the advantage. I can just imagine Arnie. We'll do the film with you, but we must work out first. <laughs> Yeah, because they, they would spend all the time in the gym in the mornings yeah. and then uh, then go out and film. Let's, yeah, let's, let's get ripped and then we'll do the film. Brilliant. I mean, it's it's. I I, I got to say that out of all of the 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 films, uh, Predator films, I I love both the first two. I mean, they they, they they're so different. But yeah, they're so you you can't compare them. It's not like in Alien, do you, where you just have a direct comparison. Well, this one was quieter, this one was louder. The first one was just pure jungle, and Predator Two was just pure urban. Yeah, yeah. What I love about the first one is the first time you see the Predator, what the Predator can see, the way it yeah. sees in infrared. Yes. It, it was so at the time spooky, and and when yeah. you can see what he's seen, it's got that weird sort of ambient soundtrack that he mm. can hear. Yeah, the sound, like, the sound uh, of the, uh, the the yeah, which yeah. is all that kind of stuff, and you're like, what the hell is that? And you just see that a few times, and then after the storm, um, the that the base, drug, that drug, drug base, base yeah. yeah, and uh, which I love that part where. Um, they're like, oh, we'll, we'll never get into the, you know, how can we do it? And Arnie just picks up the truck and then just pushes it down the hill. Yes. Do you remember yeah, that? was yeah, great, yeah. you know what I mean? And he just kicks it all off. And, yeah, yeah, and they have a good old fight. It's great. And um, But then the alien, then the predator goes down to the village after he, um, you know, when they kill that scorpion. 
and at that point you don't know what it is and mm. then you just see this hand come out and it's all weird it's got like light long fingernails and stuff and it picks up yeah. the scorpion and you go anytime because it's obviously recorded what they were saying and stuff yeah it's great yeah. it really builds the tension it was, it was quite a scary film as well really definitely I mean this was I mean, you've got to remember this was before Blair Witch before any kind of spooky, spooky forests were really you know yeah, this this is one of those things where normally when you're watching a Rambo thing, you just sit there going, "Yeah, this is great," but this kind of put that edge to it, mm. that un- unknown feeling of fear. And you know, Andy, we could actually insert this when we edit when we get back to camp. Okay, we'll do that. Then. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's, the, the, we probably sound awful when we do that. I, I want to, you have to keep it in, though. We're ashamed of ourselves. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, no, nobody had seen this before. Nobody no. had seen, and the, uh, the actual design of the um, of Predator Alien as well. Obviously, they had aliens in the background. These films were never, ever connected at this time. No, when this movie came out. Were, were, like, graphic novels and comics done after this? Yeah. Or before it? I'd say after Right. Um, there was definitely no tie-in with this. This is a pure idea okay, that came from a pure, pure angle. But there was that thing in the back of the mind. Aliens had just come out, I think. This is 1987. Mm. So they they had they had to kind of make sure that it was different enough. And it was a part of the release films like this, and they were really strong 18s, and they'd still do really well. They weren't scared yes. of. Putting, you know, like if they release this film now, it'd have to be a 12A. Yeah, they'd have to kind of bring it down. Which, but it, it's a big surprise because r- most recently Marvel brought out Deadpool, and that that threw the R, that got an R certificate, right? It did, yeah. But it this had big, to be. Um, everyone's scared now that everyone's just going to put out R-rated films because Deadpool did well. Yeah, but that's that's okay. That's okay, but um, it is. But I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to make every film R-rated now. Just, true, just because, yeah. But then, then that's it's all about. Oh, it's all about, about the trend. It's all, all about, about made the, money. So yeah. then, will everything will be R-rated now? There'll be yeah. nothing for kids. I mean, you, yeah, but uh, still, <coughs> the kids, the kids will watch it anyway. I don't think the kids will. Uh, an R-rated movie these days is not as what, what an R-rated movie felt like when we were kids, because of the uh, the the amount of exposure that they have already. I suppose so. And then you've got a film like Dog Soldiers is 15. Yeah. And that's yeah. really gory. Well, when um, Terminator 2 came out as a 15, everybody uh, was, was angry about that. Was it the first 12? Was Terminator 2 the first 12? Yeah. It was Batman back 1989. in... Yeah. Which uh, surprises me, but, um, you know, it's, it's a comic book uh, story, which is, yeah. Uh, yeah, but with, uh, the, 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 like I say, with Terminator 2... It was a big shock to people because they didn't think that you could actually have Terminator as an 18 without following up with another 18 certificate. That if, if one movie sets the precedent of a certificate, then all movies should. But then with all the Terminator films, they started to slide down in age. Yeah. I think the last one was Universal, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like 15 and 12 and uh, wasn't, um, I think Rise of the Machines was a, was a 12. Yeah, it was in those 12 age. And it's just, a, it's just an odd thing where... Purely, they were just going with the trend of what was what was making money, mm. and they base it are basing it around certification and, or darkness or tone is, is the way that the, um, that movies are doing it. If if they haven't got sequels to to rely on or reboots, then these are the things that they're using as a as a as a measurement mm. of success. Mm. It's a shame. But Predator. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, would um, so yeah, you see the hand for the first time. Yes. Um, and then you got the first kill because they they rescue that girl, don't they? That's right. That Only wants um, to leave her there. They had the uh, the girl in this movie. Um, bit of a surprise actually, having her in there. But I think it was a, a, a means of of you know they needed to they couldn't just go in gun ho anymore. They had to protect somebody. Um, yeah, well, yes, yeah, so it's kind of like casualties of war in a way. Sort like, of, you know. yeah, because uh, it's just it's it's Carl, well, Dylan. I think is his name Dylan. I think his name's Dylan in the film. Uh, it'll, it'll do. Yeah, we're, um, it's his responsibility, isn't it? Yeah, but it's got like it leads to that great scene where um, uh, Billy is at that verge and he's just looking into the trees. Yes, and then you see the predators um, shot of looking back at them. 
and then he's like there's something in the trees you know and that great scene and then Arnie's next to him and he's like looking he's called Dutch Arnie's called Dutch Arnie's called Dutch yeah, yeah. that's it and they're both stirring out and then it's, just, it's, it's a really great scene yeah I really yeah. like that and then the girl hits the, the bloke with that um, branch and then runs for it doesn't it yeah because she doesn't feel safe she's yeah, got that, she that wants that to get newt. away from him obviously yeah she's got that newt feeling of uh, I can survive on my own yeah and then I just love that scene where you can the, the predators run in and then you can see them two running and he's trying to catch the girl finally catches the girl and she's going mental he's like please please just stop please and then he looks and then just splat <laughs> yeah and then she's just covered the first in kill. Blood. Yeah, she's covered yeah. in blood and he's just like ripped apart yeah and it's it's just one of those it's a really good scene because it's really thin like what's going on uh, splat yeah um, cause and the it, first time you see that effect is when it comes out the the forest at him he's got he's got like a cloaking device hasn't he where you can sort of make out the um, you can sort of make out the the, the, the image of him but he's mm-hmm. cloaked he uses like that mirroring whatever, technology whatever yeah, it is yeah I think that was never the, seen that before yeah that was um, they were starting to develop um, the CGI because they, they they had it for um, the Abyss as well when they did the water creature that was yeah. the first was prototype. the Abyss before or after this after this um, yeah, but this was kind of like the prototype for that that technology where they thought oh trans- transparency and, and form and creating form that's not of you know not mm. of the world, but but having it in there, making it look like it's really there. It was a uh, yeah, it was quite an interesting way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah, and um, you know we haven't seen anything that mysterious since. I don't think that alluring the enigma of of the predator. Yeah, because yeah. pretty much everything you've seen now, haven't you? Yeah, and exactly. They, you know, it's it's one of those things. Whoever gets there first, and obviously predator got there first. Was exactly, it? and they they kept with the idea of keeping the image of of the alien of of the predator alien um, right up to the very end. And of course, yeah, but we've we've got the deaths to to deal with deal with now. I mean, there's there's a lot of in, in when um, we well, starts picking them off one by one, then doesn't he? But once Billy goes, you kind of felt safe safe with Billy. He is it, the he was one of the characters where he was able to sense, and I think Dutch knew that mm. without Billy. There was no kind of like pre pre warning that the alien that was was around there. Yeah, well, yeah. When it takes Jesse Ventura, yeah, that's one hell of, because it just shoots him from the back, doesn't it? It just bursts out the front. That's it. Yeah. Was that with the uh, spear or the or the the, the, the spinny thing? No, no. It was, it was just a, it one. was like a big ball of a ball Fire. of laser that just yeah. like shoots his. It goes through his back, but just rips out his front. That's it. Yeah, it's a great. Yeah. It's just a big, big rounds of blood, and he just falls to the ground. And yeah. then the um, his best mate in it, that this skinhead dude, he kind of runs up, sees him, and he looks in, and he, you see the outline of the predator, and his eyes just flash, and he picks up that midi gun, or big massive shooty gun thing, and starts just starts firing, firing into yeah. the. Uh, it's a great scene, yeah. and then everyone else just walk up to that patch of forest and just all start mowing it down. I remember that, and it was it was just it went on for about four minutes, that, yeah, just mowing it down, and then all of a sudden, they, I was like, they're going to run out of bullets eventually, right? They can't really carry all that ammo for that. It's an eighties action film. It's a you don't great have to worry thing. About it. That's what they wanted. That's what they wanted. They wanted to, yeah, because uh, the the thing about machine guns, uh, they they it was kind of like a it elevates movies at for, for <coughs> the testosterone in us. It, it, it kind of makes it instead of just being excited that's the orgasm coming out that's you know the, the machine gun fire is definitely there for a reason and it does make you excited well it's males unleashing the load exactly and it's hilarious because this is exactly what it is it's like cars and fast the furious movie it's you know it's going faster. No, no, no. It's this machine gun power. This is this is where the the core of masculinity uh, it really comes from. Yeah, I, I like um, I like craft works. <laughs> that's where I ask my masculinity. A nice watercolor. Craft works. Well, you mean like painting by numbers kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah? That's why. That's where I get my kicks. <laughs> I can imagine you doing that like a machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> With, ah, paint. Yeah. Ah, paint. Number two. Two, 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 <laughs> yeah, Laser. Yeah. Oh man. So oh. at that point, the paranoia starts, doesn't it? Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Carl Weathers is convinced there's like a, a group of people who's picking them off. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, um, Billy senses it's something he different. Knows it's something. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is not, yeah. What's yeah. that line? There's nothing but some, just a group of men out there picking us off. you got to keep you cool. He's like, there's something out there looking for us. And it ain't no man. Or something it like that. Man. It ain't a man. This isn't no man. Yeah, 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 you're right. And what is it? They have to get to the chopper, don't they? That was the, the point. Get to that's, the job. But... That's the line. Yeah. That's the line. And, 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 and it, it, I so, can't, it's yeah, kind Billy's of dead. Really. Yeah. Um, he, you hear him kill some people, don't you? And someone screams and Billy just stops. And Arnie's trying to get out there with the girl, and yeah, and yeah. he's carrying his mate, isn't he? Dragging him along. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Um, Billy just stops, takes his uh, top off, and then just cuts himself. Yeah. And just stands there. And just waits for it. Yeah, and then yeah, you so hear... He draws it in because of the blood, of yeah. course, yeah. And then you hear that scream, and then Arnie turns around and he looks at the girl, and you're like, right, what, what's going on here? And that's thing, you know, it just sort of appears and shoots Arnie, but just knocks him to the floor, doesn't it? And she tries to shoot him, and he's like, no, because the point is, is if they're not armed, he doesn't go after them, does that's he? That's it, that's it. Because he wants, he wants it. The hunt, spot. it's a thrill it's of the, the hunt. hunt. Yeah. yeah. And do you remember that drop, where Arnie sort of, like, slides down that yes. thing, he's trying to get off, and he goes, oh. And that, that was so just, goony. Oh, that what was. a drop that is. But then, the film <laughs> just goes full-on action, where yeah. it's just mano on mano, Arnie against the Predator. Oh, you got no other characters. Such yeah. a yeah. great great parts of the film he sets up all those booby traps he fi- yeah he figures out doesn't he when he's tried to get away from the predator that when he's covered in mud the predator can't see him that's it and it's all about heat signatures and yeah. uh, it's like that was that was the turnaround and that's when he's, he set up all the booby traps did the, uh, the the Kevin Home Alone thing yeah and really uh, you know he pulled out his marbles and spread them on the ground and uh, yeah. um, no I, I think it was uh, yeah the, the, the setting of the traps was kind of like that 18 moment where it's like yeah let's do it come on you can do it yeah I believe in I believe in Arnie and that's probably where the power of Arnie comes from this movie and why he is so great and why we enjoy him so much is that we're behind him all the time there's not one moment in this movie where we look at him and think oh, he's a bit of a jerk he shouldn't be in this movie he should be no there. he's great there's it? nobody else I mean, even if you think about Gary Boosie in, um, in the second film who he 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 should actually have his own Predator movie as well because he has that as he is now as he is Boosie now <laughs> Boosie now I would love to I would pay to go and watch that the Predator would leave him alone he'd be like freaked out by him he's like right okay we'll, <laughs> okay we'll, but it, we'll leave it here but, you, uh, you've changed <laughs> yeah I mean, but Arnie he owned it and he that, and we that last him. showdown at the end is so good so good yeah it yeah. really is it was a fireworks display of beauty it yeah, was, yeah it was amazing because he, he's obviously he's turned the, he's turned the tables that he knows he's you know predator's weakness, yeah. but even when he ends up falling into the uh, the the water and it takes all the the mud off him, yeah, I love that when he sort of he just lies, doesn't he, on the um, on that log, mm-hmm. and next thing you know, you just see the two daggers just come out of nowhere over his head, over his head, yeah, yeah and then he just drags him up, and then the predator sort of just look checks out his face, his skull, pops him down, it's like right, come on, let's have a fight then. And they just have a, they have a fight, and it's fantastic. Yeah, he because he he just he completely drops all his weapons and just yeah. This is it. And he takes his mask off. You're one ugly. No, did he say that in the first movie? Because yeah, he says that in the first movie. Because Danny Glover then says it again in the second movie. But the predator finishes his line. Yeah, he's like which... you're one ugly, and he wakes up and goes. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, Aspen. Yeah. Um... But yeah, yeah, yeah. He he says it. At that point, yeah. So was it the same? It wasn't the same alien, though, because the no, first no, one killed blew him. up. Yeah. So yeah. how how did the second one know? Uh, in the second film, it's just a callback. It's just a callback. Yeah. But that, that's unless the thing. everything's recorded, I don't know. But yeah, maybe are we supposed to think so much maybe, about that? I don't know, but maybe 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 not. But uh, that's the shame about Arnold Schwarzenegger and and his personality is that he doesn't leave his catchphrases alone I mean uh, get to the chopper is yeah. everywhere but it kind of spoils it kind of weakens the, it, 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 I don't want them to take any way, anything away from this movie like they have done with the Terminator which is purely just base every, every single incarnation of, the, of, a, of a Terminator film is just going to be about those key, key catch words yeah. and that's the only thing they're hanging on I was about hanging on when he chucks that dagger into that guy just stick around Stick around. Yeah, when he, he kicks the door down, knock, knock. <laughs> it's, like, oh. it just, it's like, come on. I mean, that, that's that's probably why, because this movie, this was before he actually started to do all that rubbish. I and mean, he had the first thing, I think the first thing that we, we ever hung up on was, was to I'll get to back. the chopper. I'll be back. It was in Terminator, yeah. wasn't it? But I don't think, I, I don't think it, it, people made a big thing about it until after they get to the chopper. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he thought, hey, I can make money by just saying 
the things I already But again, said in though, the 80s action films was the time of like. One liners. One liners, you yes. know, they were, they were full of them. But, and then while. Arnie having such a distinct. Just having that such a. Um, Austrian accent. Yeah, that, you know, he. I was trying to think of a nice word, but I can't. But just Dem- having that demeanor, voice, that charisma. Yeah, well, just voice. having that voice he has. Yeah. You know what I mean, it, when he puts the catchphrase, you want to try and imitate it. Yeah, so. exactly. It's it's infectious, and that's probably why why he is so successful in these movies. But at least we we, we catch him on the high point here. This is his, like you say. I think you, I agree with you completely. This is this is Arnold Schwarzenegger's strongest action movie. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. Not, and, to, um, not to say that there are other movies that he may have done that were more dramatic. Yeah, or had more acting chops. But even like ultimately, at the very end, he couldn't finish the job. No, you know what I mean. When he's sort of like, he, basically, the if you've never seen the film Predator, starts to kick the hell out of him, doesn't he? Because I love that scene where it's like he punches Arnie, punches Arnie, and then Arnie gets that one smack in, and the Predator sort of goes and like sort of licks its chops a little bit, and then just belts him. You know what I mean? Again, and it's like but it's, know, Arnie's it, yeah. totally. Out of it, he's like, no matter how strong he is, he's never going to be. It's, it's a rocky moment. Yeah, it's yeah. a rocky moment. They basically they do that because they, you know, they no matter what, even if he is going to be killed by this beast, he's not going to go down without you know, a fight. Without absolutely, a fight, yeah, yeah. That's it. And uh, when he drops that massive log on him, one thing I always thought was quite funny is he. Okay, how did he get this massive tree trunk? To, where did he get? First of all, where did he get the rope to tie around the tree trunk? <laughs> how did he cut the tree trunk to the adequate length? And how the hell did you get it all the way up there? And not only that, it's suspended by a little stick that's sort of like he's cut a little wedge into the side of the tree and he just puts the stick in there and that holds like a massive tree trunk in there. But hey, we're not supposed to think about it. We are, because the, it was about the deleted scenes. Obviously, you didn't get the, the scenes where uh, he actually made a phone call and says, I want to get the A-team. Oh, what, right, so right. they came in with, on, a, on a chopper oh, right, and they right. came down and they, they, they helped him out and they showed him what to do. And they, they, Obviously, they, B.A. was like knocked out because he doesn't like flying so I yeah. bet like after they'd done everything he just woke up and said oh man then oh bang animal and then he sort of like <laughs> drug him again and put him back on the chair like, and then they flew off and then they asked Arnold Schwarzenegger to just to and, just finish the job of yeah, assembling and yeah. then Arnold's like oh when did I know good why did I forget it why did I <laughs> well, why, when did Apu come into this why did I not go why did I not go on the chopper to do my friends oh god get to the chopper Well, yeah, anyway, forget about that. <laughs> That's the best well, attempt of a Welsh accent I've ever Very excited. But anyway, yeah, he kicks that <laughs> stick, doesn't he? The the tree trunk lands on Predator's head, and then he, gr- he gets... And he sort of like... Th- and then the the tree trunk starts to move, and he thinks, oh, God, so he picks up that rock, about to kill him, and then he can't. He's oh. shown that he's like, he's about to die, you know, he's spitting his weird blood all over his face. And he says... Doesn't he? he goes, what, what the hell are you? Hell are and then you? It's a, the Predator says it back to him. Which is quite interesting. Yeah. But what uh, the yeah. hell are you? And then he, he just presses something on his hand and he's like... Beep. Yeah. And then Arnie suddenly wakes. uh-oh. And runs. Yeah. And survives. Which is the, good the, universe, the universal language of, of self detonation. Yeah. Yeah. Get the cat. Grab the cat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 And um, which is fortunate because it just so happens that the in the chopper looking for him, and then he knows where to find him because that big explosion just went off. That's kind of helpful. It's like yeah. napalm. Yeah. Get to the chopper. That's Predator. That's Predator. Yeah. I th- it's definitely the best one. I, I like the second one. I agree with you on that. Yeah. I, uh, but I think as far as really well executed balls to the wall action film to go it's hard to beat Predator it got the job done absolutely well so let's move on to Predator 2 yeah 
Los Angeles, 1997. It's the hottest summer on record. Pollution is choking the city. The gangs control the streets. It has not been a nice day! As bad as things are, they're about to get worse. Much worse. <laughs> Whoever killed him is gonna pay. I'm gonna finish it. It has almost no weight. But it cuts like steel. Incredible. Whoever did this took out four men armed with machine guns by hand. You don't know what you're dealing with. Other world life forms drawn by heat and conflict. He's on safari. Lions. Tigers. The bears. Ah! Oh my. Danny Glover. Gary Busey. Ruben Blades. Maria Conchita Alonso. Bill Paxton. Predator 2. He's in town with a few days to kill this Thanksgiving. So, Predator 2. Predator 2? I just want to sort of really like the opening because they have a callback to the first Predator. Do you remember it? Where it's going it's over nice. all, It's going over all the forest and you think, oh, we're back in that and then it just shows urban city. It's, it's really clever because... This is this is this is what I love about this one um, is that it, it honors the first one, yeah. With that, um, and it's not a sequel. It's it's a uh, it's a sequel. If you, it, it's, it's a continuation. Not a, it's, it's not a yeah. It's a continuation of 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 you know the uh, the predator story, but it's not a human. Uh, there's no Arnie in this one. No. And I think that's probably where, what what people were afraid of, of, of was bringing somebody else who wasn't going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean that that first opening crawl from the jungle to the urban, and that whole urban scene, in fact, was it was incredible. I've not seen anything quite like that in a long time. Yeah. Because it's like it yeah. seems like there's a kind of a police state idea going on and everyone's rebelling against that's it, it. it's martial law, martial uh, law yeah, pretty yeah. much uh, everywhere and uh we, we, and it, there's nothing's explained though there's no there's nothing saying okay this is exactly you know the, the, the this is a, a bounce on because of all this political stuff that happened uh this is you know there's no there's no explanation it's just simply this is the future it's like mad max mm. and you know everything's chaotic oh, yeah. and um uh, and this is where we are um and and it, it seems so dated at the same time it's like um this this is what happened in the 80s and it's still the 80s even though it's like 2017 you know it's it's still got that same vibe which it would it would have because if technology is not advancing if fashion's no no longer existing as a as a cultural uh, identification they'd just all be wearing <coughs> the same stuff ill-fitted clothes of the 80s so i think it's it still feels timely it still mm. feels as though it could be now or the future. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I like that. I yeah, like absolutely. That. It's got a sort of Robocop vibe to it. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that that could be a very, very uh, strong uh, um, influence. Yeah. I'd say. Um, especially when you've got the, the group of uh, cops, as we are. We've got Danny Glover, who is our lead. Yeah. Um, very, very good choice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the only time I've actually seen Danny Glover hold the screen on his own as a as a as a main character. Really? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, he he's not a lead; he's usually a support. Yeah, I've never in, thought of it like that, but yeah, and he does it well. And you've got like your strong female characters. Yeah, she's the the, the um, Hispanic woman who doesn't take any any uh, any messing. Yeah. She's very much like Vasquez. Yeah, in aliens. yeah in yeah, Alien. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm, who else do we have? Bill Paxton, who's an alien, yeah, there's... playing the wisecracking know-it-all. Really? Him playing a wisecracking know-it-all? Can you imagine? I can't imagine. That must have been so hard for him. Yeah. <laughs> so unlike his other characters. And um, it's quite funny because I remember Empire Magazine did a whole feature on Bill Paxton and his deaths. Oh, really? Death scenes. Yeah, and at the time, I, I can't remember what the film was, but... Uh, he apparently dies in almost every one of his films, apart from Twister and True Lies. Wow. Um, which I think is uh, saying something. 
<laughs> yeah, he's like, um, he's the guy out of Lord of the Rings who dies in all these films. What's his name? Sharp. Oh, what's his name? Sharp? You mean Sean Bean? Sean Bean. He oh. dies in all these films. Oh. Well, that's, that's a good fact. So yeah. maybe if Bill Paxton and Sean Bean were in the same movie together, they can... Uh, they might duel it out. So duel it out. Fine. That could be a John Woo f- comeback. I yeah, guess. yeah. <laughs> like a three-hour slow-mo fight. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, that's uh, that, that's going off the um, subject a little bit, but uh, what the hell. I, I, I love that they took this to with Urban. It was the only thing that they could have done. They yeah, had they to take it Urban. Yeah, they couldn't do it again. No, no more, no, yeah. And you can't go to the Arctic because the thing had already done that. You can't take it cold, you have to take it to a city. Yeah. And I, I like the um, the voodoo mm-hmm. gang as well, it's got that, that undercurrent of, yeah. you know, a cult. Because they kind of played it out a little bit stronger in this one, where, where the predator is more a Rastafarian because yeah. of the dreadlocks. Yeah, yeah. And there is kind of, there is, there is kind of a, a, not so much a link, but a spiritual connection. Mm. As if, as if their, uh, the voodoo is actually, there's like a pre-knowledge of, of the predator in their um, rituals. There seems to be a kind of a connection there, mm. which is a hidden connection. But I, I think it's quite, a, quite clever how they managed to bind those two together. And um, yeah, I think it's quite, quite cool. Um, so what was what was the overriding story of this, really? Um, Gangs. Uh, yeah, it was gang warfare. Gang warfare. Um, martial law, martial and then all law. of a sudden the predator pops in just yeah. to, just to make it. Well, it was the only thing that was missing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was it. That was because because the status quo, the norm, the equilibrium was the discourse of of of, um, of urban chaos, and uh, all of a sudden they they go into that one building. And uh, they're, they're kind of investigating it, as detectives do, and things aren't quite right because all these people are hanging from the ceilings yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and all uh, skinned and, and, and yeah. And this is not the usual practice for. But uh, isn't that what they think it is? Because isn't Predator's mo to um, rip? Because you, you remember where he, he puts his hand in the spine in the first one and rips the whole spine with a head attached to the end of it. Yes, he takes the head as a trophy, doesn't he? That's it. It's it's um, and he, he uses the bones as. Um, but does it, isn't this straight after that incredibly ridiculous sex scene? The the the, the first one the, the was first one, I the think first was one gang was related, wasn't it? It was a gang related. That there was a, that was like a, a bit a big warehouse. Yeah. But the second one was it was the first time actually. This I have a quite a fond memory of this. It was the first time so I actually I... saw because you know for us getting to see that kind of stuff was was kind of rare. Um, but yeah, you lucky kids it. these days with the internet can watch it any time they want. Well, yeah. We had to get like a, a three-second clip out of Predator 2. three-second clip out of Predator 2 where she was that big on the screen. Yeah. But the fact that she was riding him so hard... I'm screaming. And, and I kind of thought, oh my God, they can do that? <laughs> oh my God, they can do that? Yeah. But, it, but it was like... They can do that. Yeah, I'm like wow. <laughs> and I, I, I kind of like uh, the last next time I looked, uh, she was cowering on the floor, and uh, everybody was yeah, because yeah. I just I was just really kind of intently focusing on the on the sex. That's scene. the kind of thing, though, isn't it? Because uh, she's having a having a great old time, and then all then that gang come Bang. in. Yeah, she's she's off, and then they string him upside down, don't they? With all his tackle out, and he's put the uh, the knife into him, and then they notice something. Yeah, and the predator kills a lot of them. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah. It's great, and then she, poor thing, witnesses the whole thing, doesn't she? Which is kind of a mirroring back to the the girl in the yeah. first film. Um, but uh, yeah, nothing. Uh, to be honest, I I don't think I even cared what was going on because I still had the grinding, riding cowgirl uh, uh, vision in my head, and I would, uh, my my teenage brain couldn't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank Notable God! Notable death, though, um, <laughs> is we chucks that net. Oh yeah, that it hit, puts him against the wall, and then the net just starts to go into his skin. Yes, which that's really cool. <laughs> it is, it is really cool, and they they tried to do that in AVP with the alien, just to, just so that we can uh, distinguish one alien from the other ones. Yeah, uh, the predator did that to that, and the uh, acid for blood um, made a nice mesh pattern on him, which was quite fetching. Yeah, um, but yeah, this this, this it was quite a. A amazing way of dying. I think that was a, that was a good. It one. was just a, you know, because at that time it was all different ways that you can get someone deaded, and it was really, <laughs> yeah, and it was, and it was it was creative use of a 
a net. Oh. Well, well done, Predator. Good deading. Ten, ten out of ten <laughs> for deading. Deading is good. Um, but yeah, they had to introduce new weapons into this one. Yeah, nice. It was. It was. Yeah. Um, there's, there's quite a lot going on in, in this movie. There's a few nice scenes that were a big surprise. I thought the subway scene. I was going to say the train. The, in the train is my favorite yeah, part of the film. That is because I. And every time I went to visit the subway, went down to London on the underground. I wanted to have that was my, in my back of my mind all you the time. You wanted to be butchered by a predator. I wanted to stand there and what. <laughs> no, I, I. I just thought it was exciting. And I think that was that was when Bill Paxton bit it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But you um, went out fighting, bless him. Yeah, it was absolutely. like come on, yeah. And that's because it was actually I thought that part was quite scary because the lights go off in the carriage, don't they? And they're just yeah. fighting, they're just shooting at nothing. You can just see it walking towards them, and it's the Terminator thing that nothing can stop this. Nothing can stop this. It's yeah. gonna, it's gonna get you, you know. And he tries his best, but it has the good bit, doesn't it? When the train stops and he picks up that girl. And he looks at her, he's about to kill her, and then he looks into her tummy, you can see that she's pregnant, and he just puts her back down. Yeah. Leaves her. Yeah, I tell you what, Predator technology for ultrasounds is pretty impressive. They should, um... Yeah, no, They should employ good. them for the NHS. Yeah, yeah. imagine that. <laughs> the Predator will see you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's looking Mother at your... Mother <laughs> <laughs> looking at your skull thinking do I no you're okay I don't like your skull you're pregnant <laughs> yeah. like a, you have to are you absolutely sure the test was, was positive I said yeah I said, if, if it's negative then he's not going to like it yeah, <laughs> like, yeah you're going to re- are you sure <laughs> you need to be really, really sure <laughs> yeah you're just trying to get out of school little girl <laughs> oh wow <laughs> oh we're back okay. oh yeah I love it uh, so, so, gratuitous sex scene. Oh, yeah, the, of course, the the voodoo, voodoo re- removal of the head of the voodoo, voodoo man. Yeah. That was kind of, uh, kind of creepy and, and kind of, yeah. Yeah, because you see him sort of scream and it stays on his face, doesn't it? And then he's just walking yeah. away with it. I love head. that. That is such That's a great, great um, horror motif. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I love it when they, when they do that. Um, hey, look at the, we're talking about films we like. Yeah, we we are doing well. We're doing well. I mean, I'm just positive. I've just done a revisit of Birdemic and and uh, the room, the room. Of course, now we have Room, room. which kind of you know. Uh, I have from one to watch, but it's hard to find. Anything else notable about Predator Two? Of course, well, we've got. The sh- well, um, after the subway scene, he um, he chases after Danny Glover chases after Predator. And the g- good thing about this is we're with the Arnie Predator mashup. You know Danny Glover is totally unmatched. Yeah, There's that's no it. There's no way. He yeah. Can. But is, um, so he's chasing after him. He, the, the, the alien's ripping someone's head off, isn't he? And he sees it and he goes, hey, and the alien uh, Predator runs off. Oi! Yeah. Oi! He goes, oi, yeah. you stop that. <laughs> Down with that sort of thing. <laughs> and uh, we chase him over some car roofs and he you tra- remember and then thing you know um thingy comes out of nowhere Gary Boosie yeah and he's like we we've, we've been after this and he ends up in that like um, control panel that control yeah room, which is kind of like a SWAT SWAT van where yeah. they think that team think they're stalking the predator because they know about the heat signature you can see infrared easy he, yeah you yeah. can see the heat in people's bodies sorry and um, but what they don't know is Predator's got used to this tech, and he can flick. Do you remember he can flick the different different uh, settings, different yeah. settings that he can see, yeah. and all of a sudden he can see in the cold. So they're in that ice cold room, thinking there's no way he can see anything in here. <laughs> um, but he can, and he just Predator butchers them. But I love that scene where Danny Glover basically gets a gun and goes in there because he can see what's going to happen. He says he's, he's right there, he's going to get you. Like yeah, so he goes in trying to find it. And uh, you see, was you, this in the meat truck? This is in the meat. It's not a truck though. It's like like a meat, yeah, like a meat warehouse. Meat warehouse. Yeah. And Gary Bruce comes out and always get out of here. I'm going to save your ass. I'm going to save your ass. Yeah. And then he's half he's bloodied up already. Half yeah. his face hanging off. And then Predator chucks that thing and it goes through all those meat. Like, yeah, cows. one by one. It's like, uh, <laughs> but you don't even see him get lose his head. But you, you know it happens. Well, yeah, well, it sort of goes through him, and then you just see, like, loads of blood just hit the floor, and his leg just fall down. His whole body just... It's a really good yeah. horror image. It's a great, it's a great moment, because you think, oh, this is it, here we go, yeah. and straight away, boom, gone. Yeah, and then it, that starts the cat and mouse chase, doesn't it? Where, that's uh, it, yeah, that's when he starts b- jumping through buildings, and uh, and then they, 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 he's, they're in apartments, which I like the idea of. I like the idea of being able to 
go through a building and go into other people's apartments and uh, the walls were being busted down and he was hanging off drain pipes and yeah. there was an old grandma I think was came running out at one time yeah, no, isn't old it, lady sees, he, he, Predator's got wounded isn't he and he's in the um, bathroom yes. trying to fix himself was that her bathroom yeah and she's walking up and then he like clips himself and screams <laughs> And then she's like, because isn't she holding like a bat or something? She's holding something, yeah. She's, yeah. Uh, but then th- there's a weird, there was a weird moment where the where I think the film, um, it made a made its only mistake. I think was when uh, when the predator storms out of her apartment. It just looks like a bloke, yeah, <laughs> who just like storms out and he breaks down a door. It's like it's just like a very disgruntled yeah, uh, guy bit, who just, bit, but, bit yeah, angry. yeah. <laughs> it's just it was just hilarious because he just ignores her and she's just standing there like. It's all right, I'm a cop. I don't think he gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, but at that point, Danny Glover, he's coming down that drain pipe, isn't he? Yeah. And then all yeah. the birds flap. It's like, oh, why does it have to be that birds? Kind of thing. Very, very diehard, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, and then he turns moments. around and you can see the predator in the, mm. in the room. He's like, oh, shit, <laughs> he's trying to get down can, quick. Can you imagine Bruce Willis in this movie instead of Danny Glover? Can you imagine mm. how that would have been? I will try not to. Okay. It wouldn't have been as good of a film. I think it was because he was doing Die Hard 2. It would, it would be more time. wisecracking. I know Danny Glover does do the odd one. He does it. But, but I'm, I'm so glad that he wasn't available. I'm so glad that this is Danny Glover's movie. I think this yeah. is one of his only, yeah, like I say, one of his only movies where mm. he's, he owns it. And he does a great job. He's a really good, he's a really good um, protagonist. Yeah. For, for, for a gun. Yeah, for a good yeah. Um, So, yeah, so from that moment on, he... Um, he then ends up in the uh, the craft. Yeah, can't remember. Where he gets he falls in there, doesn't he, or something? I think so. I think is it, it's a it's a chase. Sort of. Yeah. There's no helicopters involved. No. It's just straight straight there, and, yeah. um, and well, then, when he's in yeah. the craft, it's um, yeah, it looks very as it would a very it's a very good set. Yeah. And there's all that smoke, uh, steam on the floor. Reminded me of um, Fire in the Sky. Yeah. You know, the, uh, yeah. The the they have a very typical idea of of alien technology where the walls is kind of made up of a, of a material that was transparent and glowing. Um, Hadn't Danny Glover used that circle circular? He picked it up. He, he didn't took he it, chop yeah. the predators at the hand off with it? He's hanging on, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's he hanging does on. That and yeah. he does. He's smart because he's trying to reach for it, and uh, which I, I thought it was kind of amazing because he's trying to reach for it. I'm thinking he's gonna he's gonna shred his hand by picking it up. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be that sharp. It's but that. it sort of works by touch, doesn't it? And then yeah. he just he ends up getting it first and gets the predator because the predator's hanging on to him, isn't he? Yeah, and the predator like, falls down that. He falls down the um the, the building. He grabs the drain pipe, goes over to the next side of the building, and sort of smashing through. That's what happened. That's it. I remember. That's it. Yeah, because there's um. Danny Glover's going into the craft. He has that sort of thing yeah. on him, doesn't he? He's got it strapped to him. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it comes out of nowhere, doesn't it? The, uh, the predator and they end up having that that little punch up. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank, thanks, thanks, Stephen. <laughs> it was a good punch up, but it wasn't the it wasn't the only punch up. I think. I think it no one here was good, but yeah. so you could tell Danny Glover's totally unmatched. He's just lucky to have that alien tech that he He's, managed yeah. to just drive into his body and kill him. And I think it, what was really interesting was uh, the the clothing that Danny Glover wore for the whole film. That mustard shirt. Yeah, was well, it sort of like it's great? Yeah, it was detective a good color. type. But uh, for some reason, it's, it's one of the things that I remember what he was wearing. I don't remember the fight, but I remember what he war yeah. it's, it's odd yeah but that's mm-hmm. cool yeah. okay mm-hmm. and then of course the end thing is you know it's like you are one ugly motherfucker yeah. and then um yeah um but i yeah i love predator 2 i, I saw it when i was young and uh, it was right on the, the same time as die hard 2 and it was a, it was a good time for action films i think yeah i think things started to get a little bit weird like, oh how, how much time you got left buddy well i'm okay i'm just checking mm. what don't when you're out Sorry? How, how much time you got left? I've probably got 15 minutes to 20 minutes. Holy cow, we've got to cover Predators, Cloverfield and Monsters. I think we might just stop on Predators, eh? Yes, let's do that. Predator films. Okay, so Predators. How long have we been now? We've been a while. Uh, just coming up to an hour, but I think we can clip about 10 minutes of, of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love... Yeah, the, the first two Predator films are, are really good. Yeah, and it's been a long time since... Uh, I mean, of course, the AVP movies came out and they did the there whole thing. There is another thing. Predator film coming out soon. Did you know about that? No. Yeah, um... 
I'm going to Google it. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but... Uh, I remember seeing something about it. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, having Robert Rodriguez uh, uh, producing this latest one was probably the only reason why it did get made. Yeah, it's I don't the, know. I don't know why. The Predator Four. I wouldn't call it. I'd call it Predator Three because Predators is not really part of it, is it? No. But it's called March 2018. It's going to be. Yeah, but I, I don't think really pe- people really care where they, where they where they come from as long as it's you know. Ah, the thing about sequels, it's it's just difficult because it's going to be in, in yeah. the hands of the wrong people every time. I think every time you make a Predator film, it has to really be a standalone Predator film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah. Um, because there's nothing you can string along here. There's no reason to bring any of the... Ca- I mean, okay, Predators is... is uh, It's back to the jungle. Yeah, but on another planet. On another planet. This is the twist. The twist is... And spoiler alert if you haven't seen it already. First of all, you're thinking that this is actually on Earth. Uh, but about 20 minutes into it, when you realize that all these, as all these characters have assembled, they walk up to the edge of the, of the, uh, of the jungle to clearing, and they can see that there's, there's a lot of stuff in the sky that says that they're on an alien planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff in the sky, yeah. Basically so essentially planet, they've yeah. been abducted. They've been abducted. And they're like thieves and like master assassins and, you know, be- marksmen. They're like best of the best of yeah. being evil and um, they're abducted and put onto this planet so a, a predator can see if he can kill them it's a questionable list <laughs> yes <laughs> considering the actors that they actually got for it there you go have, have, have a cheesy cheesy cracker <laughs> thanks mate can you feed the monkey there oh we've got, let's see you got to keep the uh, wildlife happy. Yeah, so yeah otherwise they eat you. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, it's a very questionable cast uh, of people. Yeah. Um, straight through. I mean, we, we've. Okay, so the first film had Arnold Schwarzenegger, big, tough, macho man. You can't beat him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the top of the class. Second film, Danny Glover. He's great in the role. We love him. You yeah. Know, you can't beat Danny Glover. And who do you think would be the best one for this one? Adrian Brody, I'd say, the guy out of the pianist. What's the last thing you remember? All of a sudden, there was a light, and then I was Paul. Who are you? I was in combat. Black Ops. Yakuza. Who would do this to us? We're being hunted. This planet is a game preserve. And we're the game. Predators. Yes! Oh, you mean that guy who was also in... In in splice, splice was he in that one? Yeah, I don't see that. But Rob, Adrian Brody's a drama guy. He's um. But according to news of the world, <laughs> our prayers are answered. Adrian Brody is brilliant. All right, listen up. Everybody, do a shell count. Excuse me, I'm. Just, what the hell is going on here? I'm being hunted. The cages, soldier, all of us, we're all brought here for the same purpose. This planet is a game preserve. And we're the game. In case you didn't notice, we just got flushed out. They sent the dogs in, just like you would if you were stalking boar, shooting quail. They split us apart, and they watched. Testing us. How do you know this? Because that's what I would do. <laughs> I like Wait. Adrian Brody. I, as an on-screen presence, I do like him. As a dramatic actor. Yeah, he's incredible in the pianist. He is a well-deserved ki- Oscar. Yeah, the, the pianist was the most powerful thing I've seen um, any actor do. Yeah, in, in that role, he he was you know f- forget Leonardo DiCaprio and his surviving on bears, and yeah. and he, does, he really does not survive on bears. <laughs> I don't know what he does. He he does. Stuff. Revenant's a good film. I've seen it. I've, but, it's really good. But yeah, yeah, it's not as good as The Pianist. I'll say but that. when it comes to survival, I mean, when he could not open that tin of whatever it was, he couldn't open. Yeah. I felt, I I felt brutally human, yeah. and and horrified, uh, and that that that's enough for me. 
you know, and, and the fact that he was able to survive and get through all that. And, and But that's why this movie is such a misfire for him. And the, the stupid deep voice that he puts on, yeah. it's a put-on. Because we know it's Adrian Brody. He's a squeaky, <laughs> squeaky guy. It's like, hello, come on, let's go into the forest. Oh, uh-huh. I'm not going to do that. And it's like, well, sounds, yeah. like, sounds like Batman. Yeah, he's trying to do the Christian Bale Batman thing, yeah. and it doesn't fit. It doesn't work. And bless him, I just, I just don't see him as an action hero. Is there any part of Predators you you enjoyed? Um, I'd I'd like to say that I enjoyed. Um, the concept was good. The concept of being on another planet was great. Really? Uh, I, I thought Topher Grace uh, as the, the 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 one character who was he's been pulled in because he's an expert at something. Mm. Was he a kind of a strategist or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. yeah, expert strategist. But he's kind of like the, fish out of the water. See, the thing is, the Predator okay. should have won because now th- what I love about the first two films is they come onto our turf and try and yeah get, and try and like poach us. Yeah them taking us and putting them on their terms and still losing for what practice why are they doing it it's not sports is it by doing what they're it's, doing it's or, not, no, no, it just, must be just practice unless this is kind of like a just um, well like they did with uh, Lawrence's Fishburne's character that are they actually training humans to be tougher to be survivalists but, to, to, to but, then put them but then kill them because at the end of Predators mm. there's just more Predators coming isn't it? At the end of yeah. the film, they finally kill the Predator, and then when they look up, there's all these space ships coming in, and he goes, right, let's get it's ready. An, it's, it's an unfair match, and it's, it's, it, this is more like, um, this is more like um, dog fighting. This is, this is not really, it's not very, it's not, it's not really improving their skills. It's, uh, so maybe, maybe these Predators are special, I don't know, maybe they maybe they maybe it's the, they're, maybe it's the power of the power, power. Para Predator uh, Olympics. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Para Predator. <laughs> Para Predator. <laughs> but you know, you you've got. Has Kev the alien been involved in this one? Um, you know Kev the alien, you know maybe. The alien yeah, maybe he's a... just abducted the wrong people. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's, a, he's abducted these people, and then it's like, Kev. I told you. you. I told you to get the president, not like rednecks and stuff. Just I tell you what, stick him on the predators. Uh, practice planet stick them on there it's a practice They'll planet that's all it is it's a practice planet maybe it's a um, you know exactly that kind of thing where th- they have new weapons and you just want to test it on human flesh to see how it works how it rips them apart it could be that kind of a thing it right. could be a kindergarten maybe these predators are that young that they're just, they've never killed before yeah. and they're a little bit shy <laughs> I'm not too sure I can pull the trigger just pull the trigger you'll feel better um, but, they, but like I say with Lawrence Fishburne they did something silly with this one they made him the Colonel Kurtz of the movie the, the Apocalypse Now Colonel Kurtz in the yeah. movie just because he was in Apocalypse Now as the young kid clean um, you know, Lawrence Fishburne appeared in Apocalypse Now and this is nothing more than just an homage to that that role of Marlon Brando that Marlon Brando made famous and of right, course yeah. Joseph Conrad made famous in Hearts of Darkness um, that that kind of when, when when he started to do his thing I knew he was going to betray them that was obvious it was so blatant yeah yeah it was yeah. and um, th- there was it was just it was just wasted. It was a wasted uh, moment, I think, and a wasted character. Um, they, they could have gone further with that, but then they didn't really need that. They also had the uh, the, the predator that was had been captured and held on, on a stick in, near, in, in the middle. Of, I, don't, I don't know what that was. What was that for? I'm not. Idea. Basically, there was a predator who was there that everybody, and and that's the problem with this film is that you've got one right in front of you. You can look at, you can examine, you can stare at the whole time. Yeah. And it ruins the whole enigma of them uh, being hunted by an unseen enemy. They know what it looks like, and they and then all of a sudden they did the whole AVP thing where they he goes to it and lets us. If I let you go, you you you're gonna help me. Yeah. And I'm like. Not how it works, mate. <laughs> how it works. It's, it's the same thing in AVP when she does the same thing. She says, you know, because uh, she proves that she is a warrior, and therefore the predator goes, "Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're on my side now. Well done. Well you're, done. You're one of us. You're one of us. Come to Predator Planet with me." Uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, she should have been there. They should have just pulled her character in, put her in that movie, and then have her as this, uh, as the Lawrence Fishburne 
character who was Kurtz. Yeah. You know, that would have been more interesting than see how her mind would have gone. But why does it have to be another guy? Why can't it be a woman? Wouldn't have been interesting if the the thing, the predator with the predator mask on at the end mm. kills everybody, takes the mask off, and it's her. Yeah, that would have been impressive. I mean, that would have been a good tie-in. Yeah. You see, we're already thinking about it. We're thinking about how we can make this movie better. Yeah, and sort of actually never discussing, a good instead of discussing the actual movie. I, I was actually, I had high hopes actually for Predators because I thought, you know, I, I'm not too sure but, if it, who who said to me that the that it was actually quite good. It was actually a, a, a surprising, and it, it, it I don't know if it's. I was just probably a little bit too let down by the whole. Um, it's, there's nothing surprising about the film. Too many homages to everything else that yeah. has nothing to do with uh, what they could have done with the storyline and how they could have made it better. But well, who's to say 2018 Predator might be fantastic? See, I think that's going to be the thread for us um, in this podcast. We're going to be talking about films that are relating to a, 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 an up and coming release. Yeah, and that's uh, that's probably what why we should hopefully get uh, C- Cloverfield and Monsters included in the next podcast yeah and maybe somehow. actually go and watch a film yeah in the, in the cinema something new yeah like that number 10 Cloverfield Lane is it that would be good that would be worthwhile definitely yeah we'll save those till then yeah could be might be a good idea um, of course uh, next week we've got uh, Deadpool so uh, we're definitely going to get out for that yeah yeah in fact, I'm, I'm thinking we'll go watching it tonight if we can get out of this jungle. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is funny because I thought the Deadpool was a Clint Eastwood film. No, you you miss it. The, the, the superhero film called Deadpool. It's Deadpool. not the Deadpool. Gotcha. The Deadpool is, is the Clint Eastwood film. I wonder how they'd be in a comparison piece. Hmm. Let's leave it there, shall we? Yeah. It's time for liquid storage bags. <laughs> I showed okay. everyone at work that. Uh, what? I showed everyone at work that. They thought it was hilarious. It is hilarious. Yeah, it yeah. is our best work. No. <laughs> um, okay, so that's the, the, that's, that's the Predator movies done. Yeah. Um, it's about time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nobody's it's not getting boring at all, that is it? Nobody's listening now. Okay. <laughs> it's all done. So yeah, um, thank you for joining us. You can please contact us. <laughs> yeah, let, let us know Val- you're alive. Validate our existence. Do you, ever, do you sometimes feel as though we're the last broadcasters on this planet, and we're actually waiting for a sort of, sort of sign of life? I think we're the most ignored broadcasters on this planet. Yes. Oh, that's, is there something? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a medal I'm going to wear with pride. Yeah. I'm going to get made up. The, the least listened to podcast. That's got a poster. World. Yeah, yeah. The, lo- yeah, the most ignored hosts. <laughs> Mock one up. That's Mock hilarious. Up. It'll be it. That'll be that'll be what I, uh, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, fantastic. That's but really funny. I think I've noticed that a lot of the successful podcasts actually have photographs of the host. Maybe it's because nobody knows what we look like. Um, or maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, maybe maybe we can work on that. Yeah, I thought you were taking pictures this time. I thought so too, but I hadn't gotten anything prepared. Yeah, I know. We, we haven't got much time. Yeah, I was I was mopping up Catsick cat sick before Andy yeah, got I, here. I was outside waiting for five minutes. And unfortunately, he's he's in a hurry to get out to to, to out of this forest. Yeah, I've got to go and teach now. Okay, so I'm I'm just gonna sit here and just uh, think about what I'm gonna do. Okay. Bye. So you you gotta go. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll get off. Okay. Okay. Andy. Right, see ya. I've, I'll use this gun to shoot all the trees and I'll just make my way out. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good for the environment. Yeah. Greenpeace. Greenpeace. Bye. <laughs> Get to the chopper!